but hi everyone and welcome back uh, today's video is requested by me uh, this is my pride and joy which is a 1990 91 3000 gt sl um, which i've owned pretty much since new um, now i've got a problem with this at the moment where the rear wheel hub is making a noise now for those of you that are going down the road on a perfectly smooth road and one day you can hear a, a rumbling type noise or a grinding noise from a back wheel it may well be your wheel hub that's gone now they call it a wheel hub even though it's only actually the bearing that goes they do come as a complete unit so you get the hub and the bearing all in one and all that's happened is the bearing started to go now generally speaking this is a very very long life item and it will outlast the life of the car usually if you maintain your car and it's used in the right environment however if you've driven your uh, car into salt water uh, perhaps you've been at the beach for the day and decided to have a little bit of a splash around in the salt water with your car and that water's got into the bearing what that will do is take away the grease coating inside and allow rust to form the other reason is putting your vehicle into storage now a lot of people don't realize this but if you're going to put your vehicle into long-term storage you should jack the vehicle up off of all four wheels and take the wheels off of the car otherwise what's going to happen is you've got the entire weight of the car pushing down on the inner part of the bearing while the ground is effectively pushing up and you'll get a microscopic indent where the bearing is settling in one particular point and every time that goes round it's going to rub very slightly on that little indentation and give you a vibration or a rumbling through the car now this isn't guaranteed to be the problem of your uh, the uh, cause of your problem but this could well be one of the causes for that noise or rumbling or vibration through the car one way to find out if that is your problem is to jack the car up have the wheel off the ground and spin the wheel by hand and sometimes you can actually feel that that grind that rumble as it turns around if it's not a smooth um i don't know how to describe this imagine having a, a vaseline or grease on your hand and you get that slight stickiness but still smooth that's what you should feel through your wheels they should be smooth to run and and have a slight stickiness so today i'm going to be replacing this there is quite a few tools you're going to need for this job but they're all fairly standard tools apart from the hub puller and you may not even need this uh, when i did the other side it actually came off easily without the hub puller but sometimes they get a bit stuck on there because these are machined to be a perfect fit with no room for any movement whatsoever other than rotation and if it's really tight on there this is the tool you're going to need to get it off now this tool is only about $20 they're not expensive at all but for those of you in the states I know that you can go down to your local auto zone or auto parts um, O'Reilly's quite a few of them now are loaning out the tools free of charge so you can pop down and just borrow one of these and do the job for nothing um, the rest of the tools you're going to need 32 millimeter ratchet uh, on a, a half inch drive you're going to need a 19 mil this is purely to fit onto your hub puller you're going to need a 14 millimeter again on the half inch drive obviously your ratchet you may well need a breaker bar for some of those really really tight bolts something to undo your wheel nuts um, and with the wheel nuts by the way I like these new deep sockets that have a plastic sleeve on them it prevents you scratching up your wheels when you take them off you may need a 10 millimeter in fact you will need a 10 millimeter ratchet now I've got one here on a half inch and I've also got a 3 8 drive uh, which may be easier for what we're trying to get to you may need a wood chisel now we're not chiseling any wood and you may not need a chisel but this sometimes is really handy to get into a tiny little crack you've got to get to sometimes just to lever something up so you're not going to damage at all it's just to assist you you may want to use a screwdriver if you've got one 
with a really small flat tip um, just something for leverage a rubber mallet some sandpaper uh, just a, not too fine not too coarse you'll see what that's for as we go along uh, a brush and some brake and clutch cleaner because while we're doing this job we're just going to do a little tiny bit of maintenance as we go along that may require doing um, just in case any grease or oil gets onto anything so to speed up the job oh one other quick thing um, i'm not a health and safety advisor but i'm telling you that you will have to release the parking brake which means the car could roll in either direction so i'd recommend you put it in gear and chock and block the wheels so the car can't possibly roll anywhere other than that health and safety is down to you make sure you take all the right precautions for your own safety i don't always take those precautions by the way don't copy what i do so to save a bit of time i've already unbolted the wheel so we'll have that off And the first part of our job is to remove the brake caliper. The reason we need to do this is because uh, we're going to have to replace the brake disc. So to remove the brake caliper, on the back we have two bolts. I'm going to let the cameraman come round. And I hope I got this right. I'm pretty sure they're 14 millimeter. Yep. So we have one here and then one underneath. I don't know if he can get round there. The other one is just here. So we're going to undo those two and you'll need to remove the bolt completely. Now there's one other thing I forgot to mention. This um, wheel hub. I'm presently on a uh, front wheel drive vehicle. If you have a four wheel drive vehicle, it's a different hub. And I'm going to do that in a future video. So this is just part one of a two part video set. So these should be done up pretty tight because they're your brakes. <coughs> oh, I've got some dust under here. I need to clean this thing more often. So that's your first one. And then the second one behind here. Now this is a bit of a tight space and I think to make it a bit easier I might just get an extension but hold on, no that's gone on. Now, a lot of people ask questions about this car, so I'll tell you a couple of facts. Uh, this car now has 106,000 miles on the clock. It's been through 10 different countries, um, both driving and uh, living, if you want to call it living. Make sure you put your brake caliper out the back there somewhere safe. Don't allow it to hang on the hose because there's a chance you could split your hose. While you're doing this job, it's a fantastic opportunity to check up on your general maintenance. Check your hoses for any splits, any cracks, any fraying. Check for any rust on your brake lines. Um, just general stuff you can keep an eye on while you're doing this job rather than doing it twice. Uh, if you'll excuse me one second, I'm just going to get a rag. Okay, next part of the job, you remove the brake disc. Just simply pulls off like so. We'll put that out the way. So here's our brake caliper. And I can, I can hear when I spin that, there's a rumble to it. It's not a nice, clear, smooth sound. So next thing is, to get that off, we're going to need to lift this cover off first. And this is where the chisel comes in really handy. Now I've seen people tap screwdrivers and all sorts in there, but all it does is chew up all the edge. And as you can probably tell from this car, I'm quite picky about how clean and uh, undamaged these parts are. So a nice sharp chisel will get better into that gap 
and allow us to tap this cover off. Go around a bit. Now this may well fly off, so be ready for it. If it gets stuck at all, this is what your rubber mallet was for. There we go. And this is the nut that holds the whole thing on. Now, as you can see in the top here, this has been pushed in. This is to stop it working its way loose accidentally. So, now you're going to need your breaker bar and the 32 millimeter socket piece. Now, because this is a, a front wheel drive vehicle, the rear wheel center is locked solid to the main axle. So this isn't going to turn anywhere other than the nut turning. Okay. As you can see, I've got grease pouring out everywhere there. That grease is supposed to be inside the bearing. These are sealed bearings. Now the reason I've got this issue is because uh, many, many years ago this car was left in storage without raising the wheels. And it ended up doing a lot of damage. Now we can pull the centre out if we're lucky. Now in this case it now seems to be stuck and this is what your hub puller is for. So this will go on using your existing nuts. Now you remember I said about general maintenance as you go along and how this is a good opportunity. So what I've noticed here is some of the grease has leaked out inside the brake drum and I've got grease on, uh, on the sides of my parking brake pads and this is going to reduce the effectiveness of those pads. So while this is apart I'm going to be cleaning those up and solving that problem at the same time. Save doing it twice. do this up it'll pull the hub out for us. Much easier than doing it yourself. There we go. Now there's your bearings and you can see that the bearing cover is actually separated from the main bearing. So now I've got to try and get that off. That's this piece here now ordinarily that should have come with the rest of the unit and that's jammed on there. So I'm going to go and get another tool now that will hopefully allow us to lift that off. So if there's one thing I hate, it's bodging the job. But unfortunately, I started this video without checking all the tools that I might need. I've had to go over to a different type of bearing puller. Um, and this one isn't quite wide enough for the centre um, bolt. But however, I can still hold it with my hand. It's on there so gently that I can actually pull it off by using this tool and screwing it in by hand. There. 
and I just noticed something really really horrible I don't know what's gone on here but I've actually got a terrible scratch in the main shaft there which is actually quite worrying so I may have to sand that slightly that's obviously what was holding this and stopping it sliding off properly I can't imagine how that's happened but we'll deal with that later so anyway that's the, the hub off now we've got to take care of something else on here I'm just going to put that on there to stop all the muck coming out so despite this being a front wheel drive car it's still the version that has the ABS and this is the ABS um, wheel I'm trying to think of the right words it's one of those days I'm afraid um, this is part of your ABS sensing system so here's your ABS sensor and always make sure those are clean if ever you have ABS problems check that you don't have any metal filings on the ends here because that will stop it working properly and also this here must also be free of any muck now we've got to take that off because that's going on to the new hub so for that we need the 10 millimeter ratchet or wrench as some of you call it we've got two nuts uh, two bolts to undo that's one and there's the other one And here's the second place where you're going to need your chisel because this won't lift off <laughs> won't normally lift off very easily and it still won't just moved easily so you can get your chisel behind there without damaging anything and just bit by bit just bring it up and it will reach a certain point where it'll come off easily it's just so precision made that they appear to be tight on there when they're not So there we go now what I'm going to do now is get some brake cleaner and clean all of this up and this reduces the chance of any problems with ABS so just give me a second right so I've got myself a little tub now and I'm going to pour in some brake cleaner this is a beautiful solvent for getting rid of all that grease and muck on these sorts of uh, pieces off your car There's certainly not supposed to be any grease at all on here. Okay, there we go, like new again that out the way we'll get our new brake hub and now you'll see that on the brake hub there's some screw holes now those screw holes are for screwing this back on and you'll see that they're out of alignment slightly so it will only possibly go on one way round so if you line up your screw holes slide that down and remember again if it's not perfectly in alignment it won't go down because it's a precision made part line up your screw holes grab your screws okay now just before i put that back onto the car i'm going to take care of a few other issues here you will see that grease has spilled out everywhere and this has gone all over the brake pads so i'm going to take the opportunity now 
to just clean up all that grease which will prevent the pads working properly and to do that we're going to use the brake cleaner again we're going to start off by just washing them down if any of you have tried parking on a hill and the brake just doesn't seem to hold you there chances are this is your problem so we'll get all of that off there's no need for any grease there whatsoever In another video I'm probably going to uh, strip all this down and take all the brake mechanism apart and show you how that all goes. Right. Okay, so Mitch just brought up the point. Is the brake cleaner going to do any harm to your paintwork or anything? And the answer is no. It's completely um, safe to use that around any of your paintwork. And as you can see, it's all evaporated now. So the grease is gone and we have some clean pads. But the only thing is they've gone very, very smooth. So what I'm gonna do is use a, a sandpaper that isn't really high grit because you don't wanna wear them away. You just wanna give them a slight uh, abrasion so they bed into the, the drum again. Now they look like brand new pads again. Now make sure you don't work in any one part. You've just got to evenly, just a gentle sanding, just to take that glazing off. And then you'll find they'll work a lot better. So that's that. And then we're going to do the same to the disc as well. Because if you look inside there, inside the drum, you can see that there's grease built up in there. And there's no way on this earth they're going to work efficiently with grease on there. So once again, I'll grab the brake cleaner. And we'll wash all that away. You can see it go instantly with the brake cleaner. Then we use a cloth to wipe all that out. And again, I'm just going to gently sand this just to take any glazing off. It's not going to do any harm at all to the drum. You're not going to lose any life or anything like that. Uh, just a reminder, depending on who makes your brake pads, some of the older ones used to be made from asbestos. So please be careful if you're going to be sanding your pads to make sure that you're wearing uh, some sort of um, breathing mask, which right now there should be plenty around um, because of the virus. So the main discs look pretty good. Everything else looks good. Uh, just as a tip for everyone, always inspect the inside of your drums if ever you take your wheels off. And the same with a mating surface on your wheels. Because if you have any sort of rust build up there that stops that laying perfectly flat, you're going to get a wobble on your wheel as you go along. So just make sure all your mating surfaces are clean and don't have any stones or rust build up they must be perfectly flat. Okay, so that's that done. Now we've got to put this back on. Now before I do that, I'm just going to clean up this section as well. Get rid of all that surplus grease as much as I can. That shouldn't be there. There's no need for it to be there because these are fully enclosed bearings. The grease is not packed on the outside like the old ones. So we'll clean all that off. And I'm just concerned about that. that 
split in the metal there. It doesn't appear to go through the shaft, so the shaft itself is okay. But something at some point has got in there and left that mark. Anyway, let's see how this goes back together for now. So now your wheel hub is a perfectly machined part. You can't just bang it on um, at any old angle. It's got to go on absolutely true. So you need to get it as centered as possible. And once it's centered, it will slowly, if you're lucky, go straight on. But if it won't, then that's where you need your rubber mallet. And all you're gonna do is tap round and around, bit by bit, and slowly, that should slowly go down onto the shaft. Now, once you get to a certain point, you can put the nut on there and the nut will pull it the rest of the way. There we go. So we're on there. Nice and tight. Runs beautifully smooth now. Okay, with a hub on. Now we have the big washer. And the big bolt, a uh, big nut. Where's my 32? Aha. Uh -huh. Now with this one, there is a particular torque setting. However, I think that torque setting is known as uh, effing tight. So you need to do this one up pretty much as tight as you can without using any special tools. It will still spin because the bearing in the middle is still free to run. Now you can see we've managed to do this up tighter than it was before, so there must have been some wear on that bearing compared to what there is now. And now we've got to stop that nut coming loose again. So where that indentation is there, we're going to tap that in. Now I'm going to use the side of the uh, chisel here, perhaps not the best tool for the job, but I've not been very prepared for this video. So we're going to use this and hope that it does the job. So there we go, that's going to stop that undoing by accident now. Now we can move on to the next bit. Now I happen to notice that with some of these aftermarket uh, wheel hubs, this is a slightly different size hole and it doesn't fit in there too well. So what I've been doing is uh, just getting a pair of mole grips and just bending that out very slightly. So if you excuse me just one second again. So all I'm going to do now with this little pair of pliers, I'm just going to bend the outside edge ever so slightly in a couple of places. And it only needs to be very slight. You can bet this is no more than half a millimetre out. I'm only doing it around the whole outside so it gives an even centre point for when we put it back on. And it just wedges in there. and taps in like so. Beautiful. Okay, now we get the uh, main brake disc back on. Uh, again, the holes here, you'll line up with these two holes here. Mm -hmm. oh, wrong way up, that explains it. There we go. And now we're on to the brakes again. Now hopefully your gap's still the same because you haven't 
closed the brakes at all or operated them. So that should go straight over the top of your disc, like so. Get your first bolt, whoops. Oh, don't you just love live video? You will get to see all the bits that go wrong as well as the bits that go right. There's one. And one down on the bottom. Okay, and then your 14 millimeter wrench. Don't do either of them up tight until they're both aligned. So just, just give it a gentle tug into place for now. the bottom one and the top one are both uh, in position you can do these up tight now in the future set of videos that I'm doing for restoration I'll be telling you all the torque settings for all of these parts as long as all the bolt sizes how to restore the bolts to make them look like new again how to make your calipers look like new and all original factory colors and everything will look like new again so that's that move all these tools away and then the final bit is just putting the wheel back on Okay, and then to tighten up the wheel, we'll drop it down off the trolley jack. Now with putting on your wheels, you do everything in opposite corners. So if I start in this one, now I'll go to the opposite corner. Now we'll come back to this opposite corner. And now to the next opposite corner. And one final one. And there we go, job done. So some people like to use a breaker bar to do up their wheel finely. I personally don't like breaker bars on aluminium wheels. The aluminium itself is relatively soft compared to steel and there's a chance that if you're using a breaker bar which will tighten it way beyond what it needs to be tightened, you're going to cut into the aluminium and damage it and in some cases I've even seen it crack the aluminium. So just a really tight doing it up with a regular um, wrench 
should more than do the job sufficiently. So that's my job for today completed. I hope it was of use to some of you. I know there's plenty of other people out there with front wheel drive cars. Um, in part two, I'll be doing the same job, but on the four wheel drive or all wheel drive cars, which is slightly different. And hopefully that'll be useful to the rest of you. So for now, thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like me to do a video for you, don't forget to give me your name, country and province or state that you're from, and I'll be happy to do a video for you. Um, so subscribe to the channel if you can, click on the bell, you'll get automatic updates of all future videos, and I hope to catch you on the next one. Thanks for now.